in the back. Thank you, Faithful Central Bible Church. Grab yourself a Bible. Turn with me to the book of Joshua. Joshua, amen. The book of Joshua. Go to Joshua 1 and 5. The book of Joshua. The book of Joshua. The book of Joshua. 1 and 5. Before we get started, let's give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Joshua. The book of Joshua. The book of Joshua. Joshua. One and five. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't got it because it wasn't on the menu. Amen. But I just work here. The book of Joshua. Joshua. One and five. When you got it, say amen. Okay, no amens. I'm good. Amen. The book of Joshua. I had to go to the index. The index is your friend. That's what my favorite pastor used to say. The book of Joshua. The Joshua. One and five. I ain't the only one. The book of Joshua, one and five. The book of Joshua, one and five. When you guys say amen, all right. When you guys say hold up, all right. We got one hold up. <laughs> hey, don't be mad. It took me a while to get there too. Amen. Joshua, one and five. Book of Joshua, one and five. Amen. All right. So Joshua one and five says this. It said, There shall not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And I was with Moses, and I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. God wants you to know, I will be with thee. A lot of times, you think you're going through this thing by yourself. How many of you think you by yourself when you're going through your struggles? Some of you raising children by yourself. Some of you in college by yourself. Some of you go to the DMV, you go to court by yourself. You're in the hospital by yourself. But God wants you to know you're not by yourself. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He says, I'm the spirit that's behind you, that's encouraging you. I'm the thing that's speaking to you, that's telling you, don't you stop, don't you give up, don't you quit. Because the devil wants you to stop where you at. But God said, I have something for you. Let's keep reading. Joshua 1 and 6. Joshua 1 and 6. So God says, Lynn, be strong. Joshua 1 and 6. God is telling you, be strong. I don't know who that's for tonight, but God is telling you, be strong. Because he said, the devil tried to kill you. He said he wanted to take that child away. He wanted to take your mind away. He wanted to take your peace away. He wanted to take your joy away. But God said, don't you quit, child of God. He said, be strong. Because I did not create you to fail. He says, you will overcome that thing. You will get through this thing. You will survive. You will thrive. You will live. And God said, you will have peace and love again. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. God said, be strong, child of God. Because you're going to make it through this thing. And when you make it through this thing, you will come through with joy. You will come through with love. You will come through with peace. You will come through with success. Because God says, I knew you from the beginning. Before the beginning began to begin, I called you into existence. And I put love in you. I put strength in you. I put joy in you. And he says, you're going to make it through this thing. Let's give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Next, turn to the book of Habakkuk. 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 Sound like a cuss word, but it ain't. Habakkuk, chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. Habakkuk. Habakkuk, chapter 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 1 says this. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. O Lord. How long shall I cry and you not hear? How many of you ever cried a lot? And you cried so much, but you thought nobody was listening. This was Habuka. He was crying. He was on his knees in pain. And he was saying, God, do you hear me? God, do you see what I'm going through? God, I don't know if I'm going to make it through it this time. I went through it the last time. I barely got through. But I'm going through the same thing again. How many of you ever went through the same thing over and over and over and over again? You keep going through the same fight over.
over and over. And you like, God, do you hear me? God, do you see me? God, I'm going to make it this time. God, I'm going to quit. I'm going to walk down the way. But God says, keep moving. Habakkuk chapter 3. Oh, Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou will not wait here. Even cry out unto thee of violence. And thou will not save. He said there's violence around me. Some of you have been in domestic violence situations. There's violence around me. Some of you have loved ones lost in gang violence. There's violence around you. You turn on the news tonight. There's violence around you. He says, God, there's violence in the street. Do you hear me, Lord? Let's keep reading. Habukkah 1 and 3. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and they are that rage and strife and contention. Therefore the law is slapped, and judgment does not go forth. For the wicked does compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceeded. Then he said, Behold ye amongst the heathen, and regard and the wonderfully. For I will work a wonder in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. God says this. He says, I see the injustice. I see the pain. I see what you're going through. But he says, hold on. He says, it don't end right there. He said, hold on. He says, I'm going to do something in your life that you will not believe. God said, if you can endure, if you can hold on, he said, I'm going to do something in your life that you don't believe. You've got a hand clap. Hallelujah. God said that you can hang on. He's going to do the impossible in your life. People will look at your life and know what you went through and know that it could be nothing but the grace of God. Because God says he sees all that's around you. He sees all the craziness. But he says, hold on. He said, they will not believe you and what happens with you when you come through this thing. Next, turn to me with, to Hebrews 12 and 6. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 12 and 6. Hebrews 12 and 6 says this. This is the lesson. Here it goes. It says, For the Lord, who the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, and he scourged every son whom he received. And then he said, If ye can endure the chastising, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is whom God chastiseth not? But if ye be not without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. I'm going to translate this. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them respect. Shall we much not rather be in subjugation unto the Father of the spirits and live? Verse 10. For they verily for a few days chastise us after their own pleasure. But if he be for our profit, that we might be partakers in his holiness. What does that mean? God is telling some of you, something that you're going through, I'm chastising you. He says, you get the holy spiritual whipping. I remember when I was in high school, I was in high school. Long story short, I ditched my senior year of high school. I went to Crenshaw. Uh, we got out of school at 11. So I ditched that whole day. Me and my friends, we was partying at the house. And my mama showed up. We didn't know. My mama showed up. And she said, Michael, what you doing here? I said, I, I was busted. And then she said, go get the, the stitching cord. And she gave me a whipping because I ditched school. Sometimes when you do wrong, God says, I got to whip you. But he says, I got to whip you because I love you. Because if I don't whip you, the devil will destroy you. God says, I'm trying to chastise you. I'm taking some things out of your life that you don't need. I'm taking some people out of your life that ain't no good for you. He says, I'm doing some things for you to make you better. In fact, turn me to the book of John 15 and 1. Thank you, Jesus. John 15 and 1. John 15 and 1. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God says, I'm removing some things. John 15 and 1. John 15 and 1 says this. He says, I am the vine, and his father is the husbandman. That means the one who managed the vine. Verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. 
Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. God says, I, you are the tree. He says, you are the vine. And I'm the one with the cutters. He says, I'm cutting some things off of you. I'm cutting some people out of your life. I'm cutting some experiences that you don't need. I'm cutting some things that's causing you pain. I'm cutting some things that you might like, but it ain't no good for you. Sometimes God will remove people and places and things that ain't no good for you. Take jobs out of your life that will lead to a dead end. God says, you don't need to be in Vegas anymore, but I got you here in Compton. God says, I'm rerouting you. I'm replanting you because I have a destiny for your life. He wants you to understand, when you grow, it hurts. When he cut, it hurts. He takes some people out of your life. He's like, God, why did you do this? Because he said, you don't know where you was headed with that person. But when I remove them, now you can go where I have you to go. We have to understand. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. God said, this is going to hurt. When you get cut, it hurts. When you get a tattoo, it burns. But the thing is, he said, there will be joy for the pain that you endure. Because he says, you don't know why I'm cutting this person out of your life. You don't know why I'm removing you from this situation. Because if you stay in that thing, you will never reach where I have you to go. When God created you before the beginning began to begin, he put purpose on your life. And some people distract us and draw us down and push us in the wrong direction. And God said, I got to remove them because you are the one that I called to do this special thing. God says there's death in your life. Next, turn to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4. The book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 1 verse 4. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 1 verse 4. Thank you, Father. And we're going to read verses 4 through 6. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 1 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4 says this. It says... Sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are all going away backwards. Verse 5, why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more, for your whole head is sick, and your whole heart is faint. Verse 6, from the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores that have not been healed. What does that mean? God says some of you are suffering because you're sick. You're sick in your head. You're sick in your heart. And the sickness causes you to make wrong decisions. It's interesting. No child is born an alcoholic. No daughter is born a prostitute. No man is born homosexual, all that they say they are. What happens is, something happens to that baby. Something happens to that child. There's a sickness. There's a sore. There's an infestation. God said your whole head is sick. And he said it's festering. He said you didn't put no peroxide on it. It's just bubbling up. And he said, if you keep going in that direction, that sickness will cause you to be dead. You will die before your time because this wound is on you. What does that mean to you and I? May God heal the wounds in your heart. May God heal the wounds in your head. May God heal the wounds on your feet so you can walk better. May God heal the wounds on your chest because God said you're hurt and you're hurting and hurt people. Hurt other people. When you hurting, you're going to end up hurting somebody else unless God fixes the hurt inside of you. God says, I'm going to fix you. May God renew and create in you a clean heart. May he renew a right spirit in you because your mind is sick. And here's the thing. It's not your fault that your mind is sick. As a child, you was exposed to things that nobody ever should have saw. And it stayed in your mind. And it permeated your thoughts. And now as an adult, you still have the same thoughts in your mind. You still have the same weaknesses in your flesh. You still have the same iniquities. 
May God renew a right spirit in you. May he change your mind to change your future. Because I'm telling you the truth. Some of you in this church, you're going to raise children that may change the world, but it starts with you making a change in your life. God says, I need to fix your head and fix your heart so you can help that baby to not make the mistakes that you made in your life. May God fix you. May God heal you. May he take the pain away from you so you can break the generation curse. Let's turn to Ezekiel 15 and 7. Ezekiel 15 and 7. How do I know it's me? Ezekiel 15 and 7. Ezekiel 15 and 7. Ezekiel 15 and 7. We're going to read Ezekiel 15 and 7, verses 7 through 8. Ezekiel chapter 15, verse 7. And it says, And I will set my face against them. And then it says, Hear to me, they shall go out from one fire to another fire, and it shall devour them. And ye shall know that I am the Lord thy God when I set my face against them. Verse 8. And I will make the land desolate because they have committed a trespass in the Lord God. God says, if your life is out of the frying pan into the fire pit, he said there's something wrong. If you go from the boiling pit to the frying pan into the fire, there's something wrong. He said, when you're going through hell and it keeps coming in and it's recurring and it keeps happening over and over again, he said, stop because the hell might be in you. And he said, I need you to change something. He said, I got to whip you so you can get out this fire. Ain't you tired of getting burnt? Ain't you tired of getting hurt? Ain't you tired of your heart being broken? God says, it's time for you to do something new. But it starts with you changing your mind. Because the reason why you keep falling for the same guy is because your mind is messed up. The reason why you keep dating the same woman is because your heart is messed up. May God come into your life and fix your heart. May God come into your life and fix your mind. Because if God fixes your mind, then you can date anew. You can marry anew. You can start businesses anew. God says, I have new for you. He says, forget the old. He says, the old is yesterday. He says, I have a tomorrow for you that you haven't seen before, but you got to change your mind. Matter of fact, turn to Romans, Romans 12 and 2. Thank you, dear. We're almost done. Romans 12 and 2. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12 and 2. This is one of the most powerful passages in the Bible. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God says this, you got to change your mind. I love what Sister Kinesis started off with. She started off with talking about what she was going through. And then she started off talking about how she forgave people that in the spirit world she should hate. But God's given her love and it's permeated her heart and it's permeated her mind and it's permeated her household. And now her children know the love of God. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. May God send that type of love into you. Because when you have God's love, you have God's strength. And you can endure the fires of hell because God is with you. And when God is with you and if God be for you, nothing shall prevail against you. For God says I'm with you always. And the very last thing, turn me. Turn with me to Ezekiel, the first to Isaiah 1 and 16. We're done after this. Isaiah 1 and 16. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 1 and 16. And we're going to end on this. Isaiah 1, I preach the rest of this some other time. Isaiah 1 and 16. So Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16. Isaiah 1 and 16 says this. This is your assignment for this week. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Verse 17 says this. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Help the fatherless. Plead for the widow, the lady who's by herself. And then he says, come now, let us read it together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, 
they shall be white as wool. What does that mean? God says, it's time for you to do something new. He said, you've been in hell too long. He said, I've been whipping you and you ain't even listening. He said, so now change your mind so I can change your reality. If God, if you change your mind, God can change your reality. And if he changes your reality, you will have new. And not only will you have new, he will forgive your sin. He will forgive your iniquity. He will forgive that pornography addiction that you got. He will forgive that secret sin that only you and him know. God says if you change your mind, if you start to do good and start to help others and start to love the world and start to give and stop holding it to yourself, God says I will make you anew. And not only that, I will bless you so that you can bless others and you will be a blessing. May God make you anew. May he forgive the sins that you can't let go of. May he forgive the sins that have followed your mother and your father. And now it's on you and it's touching your children. May God deliver you from the things that you can't let go of. May God make you afresh and make you anew. Because if God touches you and makes you anew, you will be able to touch others. So it starts with what Sister Kinesa is doing. She's spreading love to people she don't know. She's spreading hope to people who've given up. God says, give the world hope through your life. Tell your story how you overcame. Don't you keep it to yourself, Sister Renee. You got to tell them what you went through because somebody else is struggling with the same thing that you went through. And if you tell your story, you can deliver somebody else that the devil's holding down. Because the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But through your story, some people have life. Some people have life because they heard what you went through. When I tell people I was homeless, they said, how is that possible? When I tell people I didn't have nothing, they said, it don't look like that. But they don't know my story. So when I told it to a young man today, he was like, you got to be kidding me. When I say, brother, I went to jail seven times, but look what God can do. I didn't have no father, but look what God can do. I got kicked out of college, but look what God can do. I had three motorcycle accidents, but look what God can do. If you stay and tell your story, you will help somebody who the devil has lied to. God says, tell your story. Give God a hand clap. God says, tell your story. He says, tell your story and renew a right spirit in yourself. He says, wash your mind. That means some of you got to change the channel. You might have to turn off the podcast. You might have to get rid of Instagram and social media. You might have to go on the fast so you can focus on renewing your mind and paying attention to your own life. Do you realize how much time you spend watching other people's lives and you don't even focus on your own life? You realize how much time you're spending on Hulu and on these different podcasts, on these different things in YouTube, and you're not focusing on the dream that God has given you. God says, pay attention to the gift that I've given you. Neglect not the gift that he's given you because he's going to work miracles through what he gave you. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What was interesting, I read that uh, scripture, and it says, there's sickness in the heart. I was like, wow. And it said that the sickness is festering. It's open. Ain't no band-aid on it. Ain't no antibiotics on it. It's just open. But it's a spiritual sickness. So if I walk by and I look at you, I can't see it necessarily. See, the thing is, you want God to come in and be the surgeon and come in and fix that thing that you can't fix. Because some of us, we walk around and we wear it well. The woman that killed her whole family today, well, yesterday, she drove an $80,000 truck. She lived in a $3 million condo. You would never know that this black girl had sickness and pain inside of her heart. So much sickness that she would destroy her own seed. God said, I will fix the sickness. But may he renew a right spirit in you. But it starts with you. 
giving your life to God. So you got to trust God because a therapist is great, but she can't fix you. A doctor is wonderful, but he can't mend your spiritual bodies. But God says, I can heal the places that the enemy can't touch. I can go into the recesses of your minds and your thoughts, and I can fix those things that only you and I in God know. There's some things going on inside of your mind right now that only God knows and you know. May God touch that thing. May he mend that thing. May he heal that thing so that the devil doesn't use it to bring you down. And sometimes we have to get whippings. Like I told you, I got my last whipping at 17. I got a whipping because I was doing something I had no business doing. Sometimes God has to whip you because he loves you. And he knows if you keep doing this thing, the enemy can use it to take you down. So don't think sometimes when you're going through, God don't love me. God don't hear me. God is like, I do hear you. I do love you. That's why I'm with you. So you can change and go in a different direction. And watch when you renew your mind. When you do something different, you'll do something different. That's a principle in physics. If you do something different, you'll get a different result. But if you continue with the same thing, nothing changes. And sometimes God got to remove people from your life. Remove you from jobs. Remove you from relationships. Remove some family members out of your way. And you're like, wow, why did this happen? Why? And God is like, you don't know where you was headed with this person. But I do. See, God sees a thousand years ahead and a million years behind. God only knows the only ones that know the future. We do not. So sometimes God says it's going to hurt. But you will grow. And not only will you grow, your tree will grow up and it will cover so many other people because of what you went through. Just think of this. If Kyla Perry wasn't homeless, we wouldn't have Medea. If Oprah Winfrey wasn't molested, we wouldn't have all the things that are going on today. Sometimes God got to put you through the storm and the rain. Sometimes you have to endure the pain for the God to get the glory from your story. And then you got to hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody grab your hand. Dear Heavenly Father, we stand here to altar to obtain grace and mercy. Father, some of us stand with heavy hearts. We stand with things going on in our mind and in our families. We stand with things that only you and I know. But Father, we ask that you mend the broken, Father. We ask that you heal in the places that haven't been touched. Father, we ask that you bind the swords, Father, that are on our feet in our hearts, in our minds, Father, that we rebuke to the power of our saints, that you cover our families, Father, that you protect them, Father, that you protect from dangers seen and unseen. We bind the enemy by the precious blood of Jesus. We rebuke the devil, Father, by the precious blood of Jesus. And we speak hope. We speak life. We speak safety. We speak progression. We speak unity. We speak love. We speak joy. We speak peace. And we bind anything that the enemy has for us. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into that hand. I squeeze prosperity to that hand. I speak blessings to that hand. So these young people become the head and not the tail. So they become victorious and never defeated. So that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And we ask all that in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.